Good morning. It is Monday, March 30th. This is week three of our school closure due to COVID, and I miss you terribly. I know I say that like every video, but it's true. Um, I'm at school today, and I am running into a whole bunch of teachers. Don't worry, we're staying far apart from one another, but we are all in, a, in agreement that we miss you, and we wish that you were just here in our classrooms instead of us being virtually in your homes. <laughs> Um, but today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we have three more lessons to cover in this module. However, I feel like the material in these last three lessons is kind of repetitive. And we've gone so in-depth with our uh, videos about these books that I feel we've covered most of the information in the three lessons. So what I'd like to do is hit on points that we haven't quite touched on and then move on. We're going to go ahead and test tomorrow. Um, on this, on our comprehension and things, and um, and then we'll just go on with our next module. Uh, I hope that's okay with you. That way we finish off our lessons today, test tomorrow, Wednesday's April Fool's Day, so we'll do something fun, um, and that'll be that'll be kind of the week for us. All right, we have a couple other things to do, but nothing too big. I don't want to really get started with any super new material until. Well, until next week, or the week after spring break, excuse me, when you're back in school, hopefully. <laughs> okay, and then I, I say that, and then it doesn't work out, so I'm going to stop saying that. I think I'm jinxing it. I touched my face. Sorry. Okay. Alexander used to be rich last Sunday, and a chair for my mother from our tax collection. So let's start off with the biggest similarity. Um, I know we talked about it, so we're going to go ahead and go through it really quickly. But if you re remember, at the beginning of Alexander, who used to be rich last Sunday, he started with when he had no money, right? Starts when he has no money, and then he goes back and he tells the story of how he lost his money. And in a chair for my mother... It starts out with her going to the diner to work so she can earn money. And then it talks about why she's trying to earn money, to, to earn a chair for her mom because her home burned down, right? So that's the biggest similarity that we see between these two stories, how the author used um, a play, a little play on the timeline to engage the reader in what they were trying to tell us. And then another um, similarity that they both have, and that you have probably have noticed because we've talked about it as well, is that they both deal with money, right? Uh, one of the characters has a good um, understanding of how money works, and one of them not quite so much. And I know you know which one I'm talking about. But let's go ahead and discuss um, how they view money. So daughter, I mean, let's start with Alexander. Alexander, he likes money. It says so in the story. He says, I, we, it says, we like money a lot, especially me, right? Um, however, we learned that Alexander's not quite great at managing his money. He loses it. He's clumsy with it. He spends it on things that don't really uh, matter. And he, um, even though he, he wants it because he wants to buy those walkie-talkies, he does not do a very good job of managing it. All right, so, in fact, he seems angry that he lost it, even though it's really all his fault. Okay, and then in a chair for my mother, though, daughter, daughter, she, she wants to earn the money, and she doesn't actually have a problem saving it. They all three of them contribute to the jar, and at the beginning, there's not much in it, but then at the end, there's a lot in it. Um, she's got this goal that she wants to save the money to buy a chair for her mom, and so she works really hard at that goal, and we learn that she seems happy about what she's doing. She's kind of, she's a very positive person in regard to what she's trying to do for her mother and how she views money. All right, so those are the similarities that we're going to talk about today, and we're going to talk about and some more differences. Um, so both of them care about money. However, they have a couple different viewpoints on how they should spend money, how they save money, etc. So um, Alexander, we learned, doesn't like to save money, uh, but throughout the entire story of A Chair for My Mother, daughter is saving money, right? Okay, let's go to our next little section that I'd like to cover. <clears throat> Excuse me. There it is. 
Okay. So we also made these circle maps that you guys did for your thinking maps or you did the bubble maps. And you guys comp uh, talked about characteristics for Alexander and daughter. And some of the characteristics that we came up with for Alexander were that he was kind of selfish. He was clumsy. He um, wasn't very... He was kind of angry. Uh, he didn't like to be picked on. He um, he was impulsive. We use that word, right? Impulsive. Um, and then we also came up with a bubble map of characteristics for daughter. And for daughter, we we talked about how she was kind and um, how she was determined to save money. How she was a hard worker right? She wanted to work for the money. She volunteered at the diner and used whatever money she got. Half of that money went to the jar, right? Um, we talked about how she was um, grateful. She was grateful for all her neighbors and all the things that they did for her, right? So we kind of see how an author can develop different characters using the illustrations that we noticed in the books when we compared those. We compared how he just kind of threw his money away, but how in a chair for my mother, they diligently count it, they diligently um, make sure that they're still on track, right? So diligent might be another word we could use for daughter, right? Okay. Um, and finally, well, let's talk about their point of view before we go on to the last one. So Alexander's point of view, he's he doesn't really think about others. He thinks mostly about himself. He is selfish, right? He wants things for himself. He doesn't really um, care about what he, he doesn't care about the end goal. He just cares about the moment right now and what he can get right now. Uh, on the other hand, daughter, she, her point of view lets me know that she is a very kind and generous person. She's not selfish. She thinks about others. Um, and the, I think those are the qualities that the author wanted to bring out to us is that she is kind and generous and Alexander is kind of selfish. He's a little, he's, he still hasn't quite grown up enough to be able to be generous and helpful. All right. Now, our final comparison that I want to talk to you about is how they both count their money. Okay. So Alexander, he counts his money in a different way than daughter counts her money. In Alexander's way, the money flies away. He's counting what he's losing, right? He counts what is lost. Goodbye, 10 cents. Goodbye, 5 cents. He even uh, makes it appear like they're flying away. Not that he's losing it, but that's just going away from him, right? So he is counting the money he loses, whereas daughter counts the money that she is gaining, that she is saving, right? I put half the money in the jar. Um, let's see. We can't get another coin into the jar, right? So <laughs> that's kind of funny. So yeah, he, so Alexander, in Alexander Who Used to Be Rich Last Sunday, counts his money as it disappears. Um, and daughter, in A Chair for My Mother, counts the money as it's gained, Okay. So that's another kind of viewpoint that we see um, that Alexander, poor kid, I just feel so bad for him. <laughs> anyway, hopefully, though, at the end, we kind of talked about what your prediction was, if he will be um, learning to save money or if you think he'll just always stay the same. My opinion is he's going to stay the same. Some of you said that you think he's going to change, and maybe he will. Maybe this taught him a valuable lesson, and he will save in the future so he can get those walkie-talkies, right? Um, and uh, daughter, I think she'll always remember this, and she'll try her best to continue to be generous and a hard worker. Okay, that is it for today. Um, Really quickly, I, just a couple things that will be on your test tomorrow. You're obviously welcome to use the videos if you want to just kind of switch between windows while you're taking the test tomorrow so you can reread the stories if you need to, so you can kind of look at the words in context. Um, I'm, I am going to just give you, it's just a Google form. It'll be on Canvas, and you'll just take it from there. 
Um, but I just wanted to give you a couple of pointers. Uh, it is just the test that we're used to taking in our classroom. Your parents are welcome to read you the questions and the story, but they may not give you answers, so please be honest. Um, and if you do have any trouble with them, go back and watch those YouTube videos of A Chair for My Mother and Alexander who used to be rich last Sunday so that you have it in your brain. Um, and really, it'll be a new passage, just like in class, okay? So you'll be focused on a new passage for the comprehension questions. Uh, again, we're going to be reviewing the phonics that we've covered, uh, digraphs, trigraphs, and bossy R, okay? All right. You guys are awesome. I'll see you not tomorrow because you're taking a test, so I'll see you on Wednesday.